What's up everybody? Chris with South Carolina Gun School. We've got a couple of handguns laid out here because today we're going to be talking about some of the best handguns for ladies. Alright, welcome back everybody. Like I said, we're going to be talking about some best handguns for my ladies out there. Um, I've got a couple of different handguns laid out here, so let's get started. And... To get started, I guess, how, well, we're just probably going to ruffle some feathers today. Might even make some people mad, but you know what? This is a conversation that needs to be had uh, that a lot of people don't understand. And I'm not trying to, I'm not doing this to intentionally get anybody butt hurt or anything like that. I'm just being honest about the situation and how this needs to be handled when it comes to my ladies out there, okay? Stop putting women in the wrong handguns, okay? Stop it. This is one thing that frustrates me to no end is I get them coming in and they're, well, so-and-so said this was the best handgun for me to get and so-and-so said this is the best handgun for me to get. Or I get my boyfriend got me this gun. Or my husband got me this gun. Or my significant other got me this gun. Stop buying handguns for your women. Let them go and pick it out. That I hate to say it, you're not going to pick out what your significant other is going to want. Wife, girlfriend, whatever. Stop it. Please go and talk to someone before you go and buy it. And what I mean by someone is go talk to a firearms instructor. This is, to me, an instructor is going to give you the most unbiased opinion that you're going to find. Maybe even a gunsmith. And I'm not trying to say anything bad about people that work at gun stores. Uh, a lot of them are really good at what they do. Uh, one of the local ones here, if they've got somebody that comes in that's a little confused about what they're looking for, especially ladies, they usually send them out here to me. We do my intro to firearms. We shoot a couple of different guns. We go over a lot of safety stuff, fundamentals storage, all that kind of stuff. And I also, then when somebody comes in here looking for a gun, I send them their way. We do a really good job of helping each other out. But like I said, what he does and what they do a really good job up there is not just putting somebody in a handgun that they know they probably might not need or might not like. They get them in touch with me and we go through and shoot some of the guns that you see here on this tape but I wanted to do this video so ladies can better understand what you have out there and what you need to do when getting your own gun and I also want to do this video because husbands boyfriends significant others you need to do a better job of helping your women pick a better gun okay now first thing I'm gonna say is please stop putting them in these Ruger LCPs or even the Ruger LC9s. I'm sorry. I'm not saying they're a bad gun and they're going to malfunction. The sights aren't on the best on those guns. And for first time shooters or first time handgun people, those are not the guns that they need to be starting with. I'll have a, a picture up here. I, I don't, as you can see, I don't have an LCP out here. I'm not going to waste my money on it. That's not a gun that I would recommend anybody go into. Now, if cost is a thing, okay. The Ruger LCP, the LC9, the LCP2, you've got Sky, which is SCCY. I'll put a picture of these guns out there. If cost is a thing, I understand going with some of those guns, but I would do my best to 
wait a little bit, save up that money, and get a better gun. And a lot of your manufacturers now, and even some of your online dealers, and even some of your gun shops are starting to work with companies like Affirm and Afterpay and Zip and all these people where you can go in and make that purchase and make payments on it. I know 12 Mile, the 12 Mile Defense, the one that I was telling you about, they have a layaway program where you can go in and put it on layaway. So for my local people, if it's something with affordability, go out there to them, get the gun you want, put it on layaway. No, you're not going to be able to walk out with it right away, but at least you're getting a good gun. And that way you're not buying a gun and then a little like this and then buying another gun. Stop putting ladies in incorrect guns. Let them make the decision. So my ladies, go out and shoot some of these guns. A lot of your gun shops, a lot of your ranges that sell guns will normally have guns that you can rent and go out on the range and try. So if you're looking at a particular gun, call some of your local ranges. Get them to see if they have options where you can rent and go out and shoot it. If you know somebody has a gun that you're looking at, ask them if you can go out and shoot it with them one day. Put it in your hands and see how it's going to feel. The reason I say that is when we start looking at these things, all these grip angles, so the grip angle here, all your grip angles are going to be contoured differently. That has an effect on how it feels in your hand. The stippling, so when they talk about stippling, the texturing of the grip is different. That all varies from one manufacturer to another. And then you can even take them to people that'll do more, what I call advanced stippling, make it a little bit more aggressive for you if that's what you want, or take a little bit away if that's what you want. But put it in your hands. You've got to see how it's going to feel in your hands. Don't go off of what this person said in this review video and this person said in this review video. That's why I wanted to do this. There are a lot of options out there. But I will tell you right now, stop it. Don't be putting somebody in a revolver. The reason I say that, and I'm not saying this meaning this bad for revolvers. These have a very, very limited round count. As you can see with this one, I'm only getting six rounds. Yes, some of your 380s have that same limited round count, but I can get a magazine in a semi-automatic a lot faster than I can get rounds into a revolver with very minimal practice. And I say that because I'm not telling you not to go out and practice. You need to go out and get some damn training. That's another thing. We're going to talk about that here in a second, but I want to focus on the guns. Just, everybody wants to put ladies in these because they think it's simple. Yes, this gun is simple, but these semi-automatics are just as simple. So stop. The only time I'm really recommending a revolver to anyone, not just ladies, is if there's strength issues in the hand, so nerve damage, something like that, maybe arthritis. That's the only time I've ever recommended a revolver shoot for, for somebody is they just struggled with being able to rack the semi-automatic because of where their hand strength was at, no matter how I worked with them. People with bath arthritis, again, not just ladies, people with bath arthritis, I'm going to tell them to probably look at investing in a revolver because it doesn't take much to pull this hammer back compared to pulling some of these slides back. So these are not bad. If this is what you like, then fine. But ladies, please, you make the decision on what you want. Do not let somebody else make that decision. Husband, father, uncle, cousin, mother, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. Stop letting other people make that decision for you. Because what they like you might not like. What they don't like, you might like. So, this is definitely, again, I'm not saying don't. If this is what you like, go for it. Get you a revolver. But I see this all the time where 
people want to automatically put ladies into a revolver because it's simple. These semi-automatics are just as simple. You wrap the slide one time, you pull the trigger till the magazine runs empty, you put a new mag in and you send the slide forward, you pull the trigger till the magazine runs empty. It's that simple. But these, we, we got to stop just automatically going to the revolver. Okay? Next, I want to talk about this particular platform. Your 1911. The reason I want to talk about this platform is there are very small guns out there that are based off of this platform. For example, your SIG P938. It's based off your 1911 platform. Now, well, why are you saying this could possibly be a bad thing, Chris? Well, 1911s, as you can see, I just we've cleared it. It was just locked back. Okay, so 1911s and anything built off of this platform, guess what? They're not double action. They're not double action. So the first shot, you got to practice drawing and pulling this hammer back. Or you do what I would never recommend anybody do is you carry this thing called cocked and locked. So what I mean by that, when you hear that terminology, they're talking about this particular platform because a long time ago, this was the only semi-automatic that you had to carry. So you either had to carry with the safety off and the hammer forward and then practice drawing the gun, pulling the hammer back like what I just showed you. Or you carry it cocked and locked. So you've cocked the gun and it's locked. The safety is on. That's the only two options you really have to carry this thing. This is not a striker fire or a double action. You're not going to just pull this thing out and start banging rounds down range. This hammer's got to come back first. So, please. This, it's, 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 I'm sorry folks, this is kind of a frustrating subject for me because I see so many ladies that have the wrong gun. Or I see so many ladies come in with their first gun and by the time we're done with the class they don't like it because it's not something they picked out. But stop it. Stop putting them in the P938. Again folks, if you've got that particular gun, that's what you like, so be it. I'm not trying to say these are bad guns. What I'm saying is, and I'm trying to get here, is let ladies pick their gun. I let my wife pick her gun out. I didn't go and be like, well, you need this gun. This is the gun you need. Oh, uh, this is the gun you need. Duh, duh. No, you let them go and pick it. All right. I, she started with the revolver. That's what she wanted. I wasn't a fan of it, but that's what she wanted. Eventually, I got her to realize you need a bigger round count. All right. So she didn't quite like what was available at the time. We went with this little guy. The Glock 42, it's a little 380. So yes, if you're wanting a 380, get something like this. As you can see, we've got predominant front and rear sights. It's a lot easier to aim this gun than what your LCP or LC9 is going to be. There are other companies out there all right, you got Smith & Wesson. They make the bodyguard. Not a big fan of that. It's a little bit smaller than this. And from what I've seen, some ladies have trouble controlling it. This is one of the guns I use in my intro to firearms. Ladies have a very, very good job, do a very, very good job of controlling this gun because of the grip on it. All right. The sights are very predominant. Okay, so... I mean, take a look. Look at how predominant those sights are. It's a lot easier for them to aim. Again, very limited round count. You're only getting a six round mag. If you put a mag extension on there, you may be getting, what, eight, nine rounds. But if this is what you like, so be it. But make sure if you're getting a small gun, especially a 380, that it's got good sights on it. 
that's the downside to those rugers. You can't change the socks out on them. They're built into the slide. These you can change out. You can put fiber optics and all Meriglow, True Spec, all kind of stuff like that. You could have it cut and put a little red dot on here. You could probably do that with an LCP, maybe an LC9. I don't know how well that would do. I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm not fans of those guns, especially for first time shooters. All right, the trigger press on this is gonna be a lot better than the LCP or the LC9. But the biggest thing is make sure we've got good sights on it so you can get a good sight picture and good sight alignment. And it's a, it's a mix. I found a mix. And that's why, again, that's why I wanted to do this to help ladies understand it's what you like. All right, I've got some ladies that come in and like this particular gun. It's your Smith & Wesson m and It's a full-size gun. Some ladies like this. Some ladies like the little 380. So, considerable size difference. All right, then you've also got Smith & Wesson that makes your EZ-9 and your EZ-380. So, there's another great 380 for you, okay, that's got predominant front and rear sights. All right, the great thing about these guns, and that's why they're called EZ, and that's it's right here in the name, M&P 9 Shield EZ, M&P 380 Shield EZ, EZ, the letter EZ, all right, because this gun is easy to manipulate. So for my ladies that struggle with racking slides, this might be a gun that you need to look at. It's very easy to rack this slide. That's, my mother had struggled with my father's other semi-automatics and that was why we ended up going with this particular platform because it's easy to rack. You've got little notches here, okay, on your magazine where you can pull it down and use that to help you load it. So you see, I'm pulling it down where I can help load it. This gun is designed Again, not just for ladies, but first-time shooters, people that struggle with manipulating semi-automatics. So this particular gun is a great gun. It's very easy to manipulate, hence EZ. Now, one thing I'm gonna warn you about, and if you wanna see more about this gun, I've got review video on this gun from that we've done previously, and a lot of these other guns I've got review videos out there for, so you can go in and check them out. This one does have all right, ambidextrous thumb safety. Ambidextrous meaning it's on the right side and it's on the left side. So you have the safety where you can manipulate it from one side or the other. So you've got your thumb safety. You've got a grip safety. All right? And you also have a safety built into the trigger. I'm gonna warn you about this grip safety. You've got to make sure you've got a nice firm grip on this gun or it will not engage that safety even if the thumb safety is off. That's why you've got the thumb safety and the grip safety. Even if the thumb safety is off, if this grip safety is not engaged, meaning you don't have a good grip, the gun will not shoot. So I have seen some people struggle with that, especially ladies. I've seen some struggle with that. So make sure you've got a good Firm grip. I don't mean go in there and choke it where you start to just shake like you're mad at your husband and stuff like you want to choke him. It's not what I'm saying. Just a good firm grip to engage that safety. Now your M&P here, the full size M&P, it doesn't have a safety on it. It's just built into the trigger. The safety is built into the trigger. So if you see the little elbow here, that, see it fold in? Safety on, safety off, safety on, safety off. You can get this particular gun with a thumb safety on it if that's what you want. Now they don't make this platform in a grip safety. The EZs are the only ones in Smith & Wesson that have a grip safety right now. That's not to say that couldn't change in the future, but right now the EZs are the only ones that have that grip safety. But it's... I've seen a wide variety from full size to compact to subcompact to micro compact that they're calling your 365, all right, and your Hellcat. I don't have the 365 here to show you. 
I'll throw a picture of it up. That's my wife's carry gun. She's out right now. She's carrying. So that's the gun she has. Now she picked the one with the with the thumb safety. That's what she wanted. I didn't try to talk her out of it. I don't carry guns with thumb safeties and things like that. That's not what I like. That's what she liked. That's what she wanted. That's what she got. So that's the biggest thing I'm trying to get everybody to understand is ladies you need to be the one to pick the gun I'm sorry husbands if you get butt hurt then you just get butt hurt but stop picking guns out for your women majority of the time they're probably picking out a gun that they like what you like your wife might not like or your girlfriend might not like or your significant other whatever it might be the other option you have out there that I've seen some ladies like uh, especially a lot more here lately is your Springfield Hellcat so you're getting more into what's called the micro compact all right not much bigger than the 380 here so let's put them kind of side by side here not much on the size difference I get six rounds in this gun I can get up to 15 rounds in this gun so a lot bigger round count the safety here on this gun same thing built in on the trigger there's your little elbow all right and it once it folds in so there's your elbow folds in safety off safety on safety off safety on you got to be all the way on the trigger to engage that safety now some ladies do struggle with racking this particular gun all right but we'll we'll talk about that and have some ways to to help with that here in just a second if you don't have an, an EZ model. There are ways that I can get every lady that I've had in here just about to be able to rack some of these guns. Again, unless there's just like nerve damage, arthritis, thing factors like that. But we're going to talk about that in a second. This is again predominant front and rear sight. All right, this has got your fiber optic front sight and absorb ambient sunlight. So in the dark, it looks like a little red dot there. You can get this particular platform with the slide already cut for a red dot if that's the route you're wanting to go. You've got your Hellcat Pro, which is this just amped up a little bit. So you get a full 15 round mag without you know, like an extension like what you would have with this gun. And the barrel's just a little bit longer. But as you can see, you've got full size compact, subcompact, micro compact. There's tons of options out there. I'm not sitting here trying to overload you with a bunch of information. I just wanted to have this conversation to let people understand. Let the ladies pick the gun for themselves. Ladies, go out. Go to ranges. Call them. Hey, do y'all allow people to rent guns and shoot them before they buy them? Or, hey, do you have some guns available that we can rent and shoot just to see how we like it? There's a lot of local ones around here. You got sharpshooters, you got Deep South, uh, Palmetto State Armory. Okay, those are places that have just about any of these guns I have here on the table. Probably outside of this 1911. All right, I doubt they've got that one out there. This is kind of not like a limited edition, but I guess maybe like a special edition. So this is probably not a gun they would have out there, but they're going to have revolvers that you can rent and shoot. They're going to have micro compacts you can rent and shoot, subcompacts, full size, EZs. These are guns that you would be able to rent and run some rounds through it to see if it's something that's going to suit you. And another reason with these revolvers is they are a little harder to control than what semi-automatics are. The last thing I want to say is please do not get a 22 caliber. Yes, I know there's very little recoil to it. Yes, I know they're easy to manipulate, but the 22s are made in such bulk, you see a lot of misfires with your 22s. If you don't know what a misfire is, I've got a video I did a little while back based on uh, where we talked about ammunition. Go in there and check that out. I'm not going to get into that right now, but what I'm going to say is 22s have a lot of misfires stop using them for self-defense and personal protection it's not the best gun to have again yes i know there's no recoil to it there are great guns to go out and practice with and have fun with but that is not a gun 
or a caliber that you want for self-defense because of the amount of malfunctions the ammunition has. Yes, you can have malfunctions with 9 millimeter, 380, 45, 357, 38, 40, whatever, but you're not going to see it in the amount of what you're going to see it in the 22s. Put your foot down, ladies, and you pick your gun. I don't care if you're in this state. I don't care where you're at. My contact information is on my website. If you want to reach out to me and you need some help making a decision on a gun, we'll talk. I'll give you some recommendations. We'll look and see if there's some places around you where you can go and maybe rent one or two of those guns or three or four, whatever we talk about, and run some rounds through it. But again, you be the one to pick your gun. Stop letting other people pick your freaking gun. They're probably not going to pick what you like. You pick your gun. Now, the racking thing real quick when it comes to semi-automatics before we end out this video. What I see is a lot of people, all right, they want to hold the gun out here like this and just pull back. Stop doing that. If you've got the strength, then so be it. Or they want to hold the gun like this and just rack it back. If you've got the strength, that's great. Not everybody has that strength. So what you want to do is keep, keep it in your shooting hand. Anytime you manipulate a semi-automatic or a revolver, it should always stay in your shooting hand. Stop switching it over, putting mags in, racking guns. Keep it in your shooting hand because when something violent happens, you always revert back to your lowest form of training and that would involve you switching hands, racking, magazining in and whatever. Always manipulate this gun in your shooting hand. Now what I mean is, is I keep the gun kind of close to my body. If I'm going to want to rack like this, I'm going to grab these serrations. These serrations are on both sides. Okay, you've got them on each side. Some of them will even put them up on the front. So if you want to grab it up here. All right, but you see I'm cupped up above it, behind the muzzle, in front of the chamber. I'm not holding it over the barrel or anything like that. If you're going to come over the chamber, keep it cut. Don't go flat. You'll pinch yourself. But you want to hold it close to your body. Pinch your serrations here with your thumb. Roll this finger back and pinch that back in there like that. And then what I'm doing is I'm pushing forward with my right, pulling back with my left all at the same time. So I'm pushing forward and pulling back. Forward and see how my arm is going forward. Really, I could just hold this and almost just go forward. Or hold this and go forward. Don't use this hand. Don't try to rack back. Pinch it tight and drive forward while you hold it. When you feel it stop, just let go. If you pull it back, pull back and let go. Stop trying to ride the slide where you pull back. And you start shaking because you can't hold it. And then it doesn't rack all the way. All right, you end up out of battery. What I mean by out of battery is the gun sitting there like this. So it's not loaded all the way. And if when it's like that, it will not fire. The gun's not going to go off you racking that round in the chamber unless you got your finger in the trigger on the trigger and the trigger pulled. Then it's going to go off. Don't be afraid of these things. Rip it and rip it. You're not going to break anything. Pull back till you feel it stop. Let go. That's it. But if you've got to, use both hands. If you want to go over the top like this, you see I'm still tucked close into my body right here. I'm still tucked close into my body. So I'm pulling back as I push forward. See my arm go forward? Just like that. If I'm going to pinch from the side and go this route, pull back, push forward, pull back, push forward. Don't just hold it out here and try to pull the thing back if you can't do it. Use both hands. Semi-automatics are just as simple as your revolvers. You pick your gun. Don't let anybody else pick it. I've beaten that horse till it's dead, yes. You pick your gun. Stop letting other people pick your gun. 
Make sure you go and check out our affiliates, all right? NoOtherChoice.com, use code SCGS5. Triggers, barrels, chest rigs, belts, we can go on and on and on. He has a plethora of stuff. If you're looking for a good belt, get out to no other, uh, not no other choice. Get out to coreessential.com. Use code SCGS10. Get yourself a good EDC or a good battle belt. And always remember, folks, if you're not shooting, you're reloading. If you're not reloading, you're fighting. If you're not fighting, you're dead. Train to live. See you on the range.